We're good. We did ours. Right? You ready, David? Welcome to the agenda meeting for uh, July 6, 2021. Can you please rise and listen to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Lewandowski? Here. Councilman Fazio? Here. Councilman Warnos? Here. Whatever. We have some people that want want the presentation. Pam is walking in right now. So, uh, sir, are you here for presentation? Me? Yes. Josh Fisher, yeah, for the PTA. Oh, yes, yeah. Why don't you go forward and uh, take a seat here, Jamie, and just state your name and address. Do you guys have the handouts? Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, this is about the card or the- Yeah, boat race. Boat race. Uh, Josh Fisher, Tula Carno Drive, Lake Luzerne. Um, Talking with the PTA over the last couple months, uh, thinking maybe it'd be fun to put together a cardboard boat, boat race for the kids down at Wayside Beach. Um, so we're looking for the town's permission to do that. Uh, no cost to the town, PTA is gonna fully fund the event. Um, I'm CPR certified if you're concerned about you know safety issues. Was a lifeguard back in the day. I don't know if my certification's good anymore. But, uh, nothing too crazy the first year, we kinda wanna get a feel for it. Um, so we're gonna plan on keeping it simple set up a registration table in the, the pavilion park over there mm -hmm. so the teams would come in register uh, head down to that side you know of the inlet set up the boats uh you know set up a finish line on the wayside beach uh get the kids lined up you know, blast an air horn and, and have them race over um after the after the race uh, we got trophies for all the kids um, we're not going to do anything too competitive this year we just kind of want to get a feel for the whole thing um, yeah, nothing too complicated. I don't know if you guys have any questions or we'll, we'll take care of all the garbage, you know. Um, gonna so bring, gonna bring the kids going to be in these things? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's probably. Yeah, because you said cardboard boat races. Right. So the idea is, sorry, I should explain a little bit more. So the idea is the kids uh, construct the boats out of cardboard and duct tape. Um, there's other communities that have done it. Skylerville has held one for the last 10 years down there. Uh, they race across the canal. But the idea is the kids gather uh, cardboard. And, uh, and paddle them across, you know, as part of a race. Um, and you have boats out there for the ones that drown? Yeah, well, that's, you know, <laughs> we're still. There's a curve, but that's right. Uh, the yeah, I figured you'd have some, maybe some safety concerns. Um, do you know the depth of the water in the middle there? It gets fairly deep. Oh, I think it's at least eight feet. feet to okay. feet or where? Right. Right. Out in the middle of the lake, it's deeper than that. No, it's about three feet in the middle. No, no, no. We're, we're talking, talking about the. From your beach to. From the pavilion park to the wayside beach. I thought you said the inlet. Like, my God. That's oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You're only going to be where the buoys are in that area. Yeah. Yeah. It's to the outlet. I mean, it, I think it's maybe maybe 40 feet across, if I had to guess. Yeah. Some place like that. Oh, okay. I'm Obviously, all, all, you're not over eight feet deep at that okay. point. All, all the kids would require to wear life jackets, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we'd probably have somebody out in the water there too uh, to assist, you right. know, if needed. Okay. So um, that's that's the idea. I don't know what your thoughts are. Wait, who's doing the PTSA? PTSA is fully funding it. Yeah. We can't make a decision on it tonight. Sure. Know, uh, but we can by next Monday night. Okay. Uh, so it'll give us a chance to talk about it. Sounds good. Um, if we need a resolution for it, I'm not sure that we would, but we do. So we'll we will get back to you, or if you want to come back on Monday night, we'll, we'll okay. have an answer for you. Sounds good. My contact information is on there. Feel free to <laughs> email me or call. Questions about yep, they're insured. So, can we get a certificate of insurance? Sure, sure. If we prove it again, um, I guess the only other thing would be, um, 
I guess making sure that the beach is available that day. Um, so, I mean, I can go down early and, and mark it off. I don't know. We, we tried to push it past the seasonal tourism right. season. The yeah, hoping that, you know, it'll be kind of available. Okay. But I can go down early in the morning and just mark it off if you want. How many participants? In the That's the thing. We don't really know what we're going to get. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it could be 10 kids. It could be 100. I don't you know. We'll see. <laughs> is it but, open to just the people of our district? Or is it I'm not going to limit it, but I mean, you know, uh, we'll advertise in Lake Luzerne and bring the kids to come over or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What month are you planning on having? Uh, September 12th, we're looking at. Yeah. All right, very good, Josh. Thank you. Okay. We will, we will, we will consider it and uh, let you know or if you have some money and we're all moving. Yeah, sure. I can stop by. Okay. Seven o'clock. We're at seven Monday. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for stopping in. Yep. Pam, would you like to step forward? No, you want to stay there. Can I stay right here? If you'd like, just. Okay. I'll be there. Yeah. I'm just going to read my piece of paper. But my assistant. Copies of the same chart. Okay, so back I am. The research that I've been doing has led me to the following quotes for recognition of a local resident named Annie Dennis Fuller. This is to purchase and install a proper identity marker within, within her family plot and a separate educational storyboard in a more accessible location known as Pageant Center Park. Though it's not perfect or penny exact at this moment, the quotes are as follows. In regards to the cemetery and having a headstone with text on it, today was a verbal quote from Patty Miller, Brewer Miller Funeral Home Owner at $1,315. It, the stone chosen was, or the look is, it's to complement and be part of the existing plot that already exists from the early 1900s. So it wasn't anything auspicious. It's going along with the size and the shape that already exists. So that was the quote. Um, be glad to entertain other avenues of quotes if necessary, but that was the one today. It includes three lines of text, her given name, the Abenaki name, and the year of her birth and the year of her death. We don't have a month and a day. Uh, for her birth. Um, it became apparent that there's choices uh, between the looks and everything, and I went for the softer, like I say, to go along with the style that already exists. It seems most proper to do that. Please keep in mind, we got $210 in the bank to go towards that $1,300, and um, so it comes down a little bit to about $1,000, $1,005. Um, so that's that. The educational storyboard, um, first of all, in town, there's two kiosks, one by the Luzerne Market, and it has a little book depository thing on the side of it, and then there's another one in front of the Harmon House. The style that it was created um, was for first, first wilderness, so the style that we're approaching is the same concept. So we're kind of looking the same as if you were walking around reading storyboard. So that led us to, his name is Drew Alberti, who no longer works for Lakes to Lots, has his own company, well aware of working with our town and these projects in the past. And so I broke it down and I kind of put it on an angle there. As you come down to the third line from Paneer, the designer, we have a choice. And I put the $27 <coughs> larger choice uh, in the red. So the total came to 2,423, but we're talking about four different companies, four separate checks for what they do, not to exceed the $1,500 um, Here in policy, right? Yeah, the quote that 
that you not to exceed if you don't have to go out to bid. Right. 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 So it's four different companies: the fabricator that actually makes it, the coordinator, and then the installation parts and pieces are three, three or four different companies, including in, uh, shipping. Um, and again, this was meant to be compatible with the Lakes to Locks format, so we're not changing drastically anything. The fabrication of the fiberglass, it's sort of like two by three reading board. And a, an example would be out at exit 21, there's one at the Veterans Memorial Park, a single one standing. <coughs> this is like that, but it's got a frame around it and two legs on it. If we choose to have it beyond that, for instance, it would be mounted within like a, a rock wall or something. So it was <coughs> steady and thick. That would be separate. And we've also had a donation to do that. But I'll reach out to Rick at the town of Parks and Rec um, and talk to him because he's really creative. He's really, really good and may have some really good ideas when it comes time for the installation <coughs> and how we can incorporate it. So that's the two parts to the project for recognition of um, Annie Fuller. The third thing is my the annual history day is coming up. So in there is a request for $250 to produce uh, like 40 copies of the little history book that I put together and to add to the local uh, local first paper and that's history day by resolution is uh the fourth saturday of july so we're talking about july 24th that's it all that's all i'm asking for Thanks, thank Sarah. you yeah. any questions about that did um, you want to go ahead and discuss what you're going to put on that uh, kiosk as we talked earlier the, well the ad from uh or the article from that ironic life a thought was if we backtrack Sally Spenson, a writer, and she's written a couple of books, including about Lake Luzerne, wrote an article in Adirondack Life. So rereading it and looking for the possibility that she would give permission, we would pick up that article and simply use it because it contains a couple of pictures also. It, would be, it wouldn't have to be a rewrite if we look at it and uh, Put on the credit, change the bottom, put on the credits at the bottom, and also say that in addition, there's now a family marker for her right. in the file. I don't initially, uh, you know, myself and Jean offered to pay for the headstone for that. I don't know if it went out, if we changed that, but if, if that didn't come up in resolution, I'm still willing to do my share for that. I'm not aware of him offering to pay for that. No, I think we both did in a, in a meeting. I remember. Yeah. Who did? Who that story? I'm not sure of what his, where, where he's at now, but I'm still oh. willing to, to, to do my share on that. So we'll make that happen one way or the other. The other, I think we already passed a resolution on so we're fine. Yeah, you can talk to yeah. What Was that personal or we're talking, he was yeah. talking for the yeah, town personal. board? No, personal. Personal. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, it, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to write a check. It. And I'm sure that if Gene, is in that position that he would do. So. Okay. But, but the other one is all set. It's already been, we have a resolution on that. On the book, so, so we're good. And the, and the 250, we, we'll have to get back on that because we can't make a decision tonight. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't no, see, no, I don't no, see no, any no. issue. There's That's plenty of money in occupancy tax to take care of that. Okay. I'll speak with my assistants because I'm, I'm confused and hope about the donation. Okay. Where that plays well, into. Both the headstone and the storyboard. Just the headstone. It was just the headstone. Just that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I made that offer last year or the year before when we started okay. this. So right. that's that still stands. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Pam. One more, David. Still on. I don't see what you're talking about. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and then the boat should be here. Soup. When he's told, he he's got it. Class till five thirty. I'm just gonna drag it down. So. Okay. Now, with respect to um, that's all I have on the list for speakers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, with respect to the um, 
<clears throat> legislation for this month. I have the monthly vouchers for the abstract. Will that be forthcoming next week? Uh, we need a resolution to extend the deadline to submit bids for the roof for the repairs to the okay. town hall because of the late submission to the newspaper for the uh, advertisement for the bid. They couldn't get it in until I believe or was tomorrow. It tomorrow was the first tomorrow. advertisement. And the resolution that you all passed for that particular bidding process and a deadline July 16th. Right, which is kind of short. So I'm at, I would ask that you extend that to July 31st, the deadline for submission. So I'll put a resolution on it to get you. Uh, the next resolution will be uh, budget season is coming up. And in my discussions with Supervisor Merlino, he uh, made me aware that former bookkeeper Linda Mason has been involved in preparation of budgets from the entire time she's here. And last year, she was part of that preparation with Supervisor Molino, but not as a town employee, just as an independent contractor. So nothing official was done last year. I, I told Supervisor Molino, if he wants to continue to do that, we have to make that a resolution and have that approved. He does. I, Linda, I spoke to Linda and she uh, is in agreement with that. She'd like to participate to help if Mr. Molino needs her services. Correct. She's here tonight. Uh, the agreed upon compensation was $1,000 to compensate her to come in and be a budget consultant. That $1,000 would be at no additional cost to the town. When he spoke to Mr. Molino about this, he's being compensated $4,000 as a budget officer for the town. So that $1,000 would come from his $4,000 compensation. So that would be taken out of his budget line. And the payment would go to Ben Mason to assist him in the preparation of budget. So that resolution will be on <clears throat> your agenda for Monday as well. Any questions about that? Like, explain it clearly. Okay. Uh, last year, she was compensated by him directly out of his pocket. I said, we'll do that again. We'll do it above board on books, pass the resolution, and she'll be paid accordingly. Uh, <clears throat> The next resolution will be resolution for Tracy Clothier. She's submitting a grant proposal for funding to uh, the state to provide us with thirty-five thousand dollars to update our comprehensive plan. So she needs a special resolution. I think I sent an email out to folks uh, this morning. Uh, that will be on the agenda next Monday as well. Pass that resolution to support the grant funding application for the updated comprehensive plan. The next resolution that um, I spoke to you all about individually, but not as a collective union, it's uh, we've been having extensive conversations with the New York State Comptroller's Office about process procedure and how to properly run the different government functions in town. Um, they were here today, actually, uh, investigators from the Comptroller's Office. And we've had extensive conversations with them, and they would like they would fully supportive and like the town to pass a resolution prohibiting town employees from, from working for, for publicly elected officials in the town. So anybody who's elected office, a public officer, town employee that work for the town cannot be working for them outside of the town. That's really something every town and state does. Yeah, she frowned on that. I'm sorry. She really frowned on that, did it? <laughs> uh, more of a frown, more than a frown. Yeah. It's, it's really pretty. Um, so your your um, your policies in the town are silent on that, and I would like you to pass a resolution prohibiting that, so that we can then, when we go ahead and amend all the town laws and the code, and that's coming next month, to start that process. But at least this will put a stop to it now. Where the town employees can no longer work for elected officials. So. For example, and this is not happening, but the highway superintendent is elected, and all of the folks, the council people, the supervisor, uh, the town clerk, anyone who is elected as a public officer cannot employ town employees for private business. Right? So that will be in there. Uh, and as an aside, um, just so that you're aware, when the comptroller's investigator was here today, they did seize the cemetery file. That everyone has been talking about for many years. 
they now have possession of the cemetery file that will be looking into that. And they also secure uh, the computer and some of that. So that's been taken to the state of Vermont. The only other area that I had was something that Councilman O'Neill was promoting, but he's not here, so I really don't know his position. Is the time clocks? I know he had received some quotes of some different time clocks that he wanted to purchase uh, for the highway department, I think, right? I mean, that rooms and rounds. I'm not sure where, where his position stands around that, but I think that's something that we want to move forward with. And I would urge you to do that. As you know, today, Deputy from Brother Waterhouse, in that meeting, there's a, a lot of areas that the town needs to implement. Um, the comptroller brought to your attention and uh, payroll and time clock. Time card accountability. So um, maybe you folks can talk uh, to Councilman O'Neill over the next few days and just email me or give me a call. I'm happy to put that resolution out there for you. I have uh, I've got three quotes that he provided me. And he got three or three different quotes. He quotes on time clock, but I'm not sure which direction he wants to go. In, so so we'll maybe I some conversation with my judge here and get that. Yeah, I told him I'd be calling him to get done. So so if you guys can you can give us a conversation with him in concert with the highway superintendent because it's you know he wants to be part of the decision as well. So we so know what we're going to go because I'm sure that it's going to take a few weeks to have this order to work so it's doing better. And last but not least, just y'all received an email um, from Tiani. She's given a list of the lifeguards, the seasonal temporary employees. They don't need resolution just because they're not really from the probation area or from their summer on health. But we did receive a list of employees that she hired as lifeguards. And I guess they all worked here in the past. So if you have any objections to it, you certainly want to take your objections and see if we get this. Okay. Other than that, I think um, we have financial reports, right? Report. Yeah. That's it. One of the things about, I guess, that's showing up. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's going to be here today. So I think I'll look at it. Shake okay. Uh, the only thing I wanted to add, David, is that uh, I tabled the minutes from the May meeting. Yes. Uh, and, I, and I just wanted to record that when I initially saw them, they had Mike seconding Jamie's nomination. And, and I know that he didn't do that. So, correct. She did change that, wasn't aware at the time, so that's why I tabled it. And also, that you had made some insightful comments that didn't make it into the minutes, and, and I think it was right. Uh, you know, you, you talked a little bit about uh, procurement policy, and it never made it in the minutes. So, um, you know, that, that was the reason why it was tabled. That, uh, well, there was a lengthy discussion that I had with Mr. Glenn Shield on the record where I told him he was correct about the, uh, bringing that forward, and he was correct about the group contract being awarded. That didn't appear in the minutes. But not everything can appear in the minutes. That's why we, that's why we record these uh, proceedings. I, I just think going forward that it's, you know, when someone is, has insight into you know, something like this, that we're novices to this, obviously, it's not, we don't practice law, that it should be in the minutes, because then we can look back at it. Like we're looking back on Mr. Shields' thing in 2007, and I can't recall why we did things, and if we have the insight into, you know, why decisions were made, it'd be, be very helpful going forward. There's no question, and that's why I'm, you know, overly broad and thorough on the resolutions that I provide you folks, and I give you all the supporting material with the resolution. You see that page your packets, but those are not provided to the folks that come in. They're just seeing the agenda. So I would urge you to, to uh, support the concept, the proposition that we produce the agendas for the public, and also give all the supporting material. So yeah. It's you know, it's a paper tiger, but the public should have this stuff. That would ease a lot of concerns if they had all the supporting material that you would include it in your packets and also the back of the clerk. But the public doesn't really see that. And I would also urge you to um, let's have Jamie get that on the internet, get that on the website. All the supporting material that we produce for the resolution, she can easily put on the website. Um, in addition to um, digitally recording the meetings, that can be posted on the website as well. It's very simple to do. I record all my meetings here. And I put them in my folder at home. I can go so that I can go back. Did I say that? Someone said you said this on the state. I want to go back on here. So I see a lot of things. 
Right? Because it's not going to be held accountable. I'm sure that's. But going to, uh, speaking of Jamie, on the website, it says now that Gene is still the supervisor, acting supervisor. And I got a call from someone on Sherman Road today, and they did call Gene because it's on the website. Then, mm -hmm. And he threw in his advice where probably shouldn't have. Um, so maybe on the, what, on the thing, just say acting supervisor or on, he's on a. Well, from my perspective, I have to say, um, Mr. Marlino is still the supervisor. He is still acting in that capacity. I've seen him actually in the building doing managerial things, um, activities, and I've also been informed that he was instructing the department head of Williams and Browns last week to do certain things. So I have not seen him take his medical leave yet, and I want that to be part of the record, the record because I have to advise you folks to act in a certain way based upon his either being here or not being here. Can't have it both ways. I know it's a little controversial of a topic, but um, he's behaving like a supervisor. He's acting in a managerial capacity. I can't tell you that he's not. He's, I cannot say that he's on medical leave and that he's got to step forward. So you're the deputy supervisor. He's not here at this meeting, so it's the state law, the town law, does require you to step in and allow you to take over. But he's still a supervisor until he. Until his behavior matches his letter, he still is. Yeah. Hey, before we drift too far away from Jim moving over to digital recording and everything on the uh, minutes, which I've already started working on, and we're going to have somebody come up to try and update our PA and you know the whole sound system, get a better understanding of what it can or can't do, so we have accurate uh, minutes. Yeah, and when you have the company come and do that, see if we can replace these microphones that you have affixed to your counter yeah. with ones that you can move. Okay. Pull toward you to speak yep. because it'd be very helpful. Yeah. To the camera, right? yeah. Or even maybe remount them, you know, just to save the expense of new ones, just take them out. And put right. Them Something close. Yeah. But with that said, I also, I want to add, with that, I have the understanding that after three months, all the tapes get thrown away. You'd have to ask Lori, is that true or no? Um, we keep them for, we only have to keep them for, I think, three or four months. And then, yes, we can destroy them, throw them away. Um, if there's something controversial, we usually hang on to them. Like for instance, the Mott Lazaro thing, mm -hmm. there was a lot of controversy sure. over that. And so those tapes were kept for a lot longer sure. period of time. Sure. Um, but as a rule, these are just helpful for us doing dictation. This is not required right. to do. Mm -hmm. so. Now, when you redo your town legislation, your town code, you can actually put a provision in there for a record digital recordings and record preservation. <clears throat> and I would urge you to do that. It would be very helpful to have some sort of recording in 2007 and go back and hear the conversations. Right. Well, that's where I was going. I think yeah. as long as we're doing it, I don't see any reason to discard the tapes. I mean, we could put 10 years worth of conversations in a shoebox, 10, 10 years worth of meetings in a shoebox. So why we're throwing Well, those are cassette away. tapes. I don't know if you can put 10 years in a box. Well, <laughs> I know, I know, I know I mean, 12, yeah. one year's worth of meetings takes up very little spot because there's 12 tapes, so maybe 15 if it goes long, which we traditionally do. But well, Lord, I just how, don't many, see. how many tapes do we use for meetings? You know, you got three tapes there, so. Well, I put extra out here because it's going to be a long meeting. Right. I keep them all here anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some meetings, there's two tapes. Some meetings, there's a half a tape. It's hard to tell. You know, like some of our planning and zoning board meetings are two teams because they're lengthy. So, I mean, between the three meetings, it's more than 12 or 15 teams. Right. Nevertheless, I would urge you to convert the digital. Yeah, right. right. But in the interim, before we do, can we just ask that everything is preserved until yeah. we get it all taken care of sure. and not thrown out? Yeah. yeah. If you don't need any legislation, you just send right. an email to the water can ask for <clears throat> Unless you want to officially pass. Oh, no, no, I'm just, I just don't see a reason to throw it away, especially yeah. in instances where they had it down that I seconded Jamie's nomination where I abstained and didn't vote. You know, I mean, those mistakes happen, and I'm not saying there's anything nefarious going on, but yeah. when those tapes get thrown away and that's left in the minutes, going back to Mr. Shields' issue in 10 years from now, right? Yeah. It's, it's going to look rotten, right? And we just, not, not like for my own protection, but for everybody's. If right. somebody's saying something right. and it gets you know misconstrued or, or just written down wrong, which is human nature, then we'll have that as a reference point. I think it's very important that we have something to, to look back at. Sure.
two minutes and down as well. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, good. Goes around. Perfect. Yeah. As far as uh, employee salaries, is that a, a, a executive session type thing, or is it something that we talk about only because it's public? Depends on what the issue is. Yeah. Um, Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes. He, he's really only duty right now is in is with the courts, and he had talked to me about his concerns about doing all this extra stuff that we're asking him to do, which really he's not being compensated for. Okay. So I think at some point we should really take a look at that and we're going to ask him to do this stuff that we look at, you know, because he's getting paid under minimum wage with what he's doing right now. Like it's, it's not really fair. So I would like to take well, a We're going to have an executive session after this meeting. We can go in and talk about that. I'd like you can add it. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, you yeah, had David. Oh, yes, that's all I have. Yeah. I'd also like to make a motion that we can let the public talk during. Oh, it's, it's, it's a great time right now. To do yeah, it. so I, mean, I, I don't think there's any reason to shut it there's, down. There's no restrictions on allowing that type of dynamic from happening. You just have to agree to it mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe set a limit on the amount of time. True. So we're not going to talk about it. So my motion's out there. Yeah, I'll second it. Well, you're not making any decisions. Right. Yep. It's just an agenda day. It's informal. So you just you, you just open the floor to folks and take one at a time and we'll limit their discussion in five minutes. No, no, not yet. Okay. Yep. Anything from the floor? Len? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Shields? Yeah, I just like to know if you're comfortable with any more information on the question that I had last week. Yeah. Um, Dave and I actually spoke to the comptroller at length today about your situation. Um, She's going to get back to us. Um, she you know, definitely uh, is supposed to be a reimbursement, so we're going to need to see vouchers from everybody. Uh, we're going to have to try to get a handle on the, the numbers are so different. Bob, yours is probably the least expensive, up to hundreds of dollars for people, and we don't know why. So they're going to tell us uh, what we should do, um, if we should repay you, or how we should repay you. Um, but they are looking into it. They were very interested in that when she came. That was one of the first things she brought up. Uh, so it will be looked into. Um, we will pay until she, we hear from her. We're going to keep, you know, we sent a check. I don't know if you got it yet, but we did send some checks out. Um, but we're, we're going to make you whole. That's all I can promise you. It's not only being looked at at our level, the state is looking at it as well. Yeah, she was so very, very interested. It's part of the process. And you're not going to be part of it. Dominic, yes. How are you, sir? It's your turn at the mic. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. uh, right here. Yeah. In the hot seat. Nice. So how are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Tonight. Thank you very much. Fish. Oh, thank you. What was that? Thank you for bringing the boat. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, there's a boat, and I have my father here as well. Yeah. Very nice. Nice to meet you. John. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so talk to us. We want to. We want to hear what's up. Okay, uh, we uh, we just uh, completed the su suction harvesting boat. It's got a steering console on it. It's got a three inch suction. It's got a, a new tray patent pending uh, with a, a sediment uh, diffusion mechanism underneath with the way that the water flows. So that's uh, quite neat. Um, but uh, right now we're not anticipating having a team available until the end of July uh, to work on Lake Luzerne, but we're gonna be trying to fill that spot the best we can. If we can't get a team by the end of July, we're going to uh, give you that down payment back. Okay, now, do you still anticipate giving us 60 days of work? Or uh, as many, 58, days? Uh, 58 days, as many as we can. Okay, yeah. and so then we will just work out. Yes. You don't, but you have no anticipation of canceling that contract? Uh, not at the moment, no. Very good. Yeah. That's good to hear. I was a little yeah. worried about it. Yeah, we, uh, we're, we're struggling with a, a number of people. Uh, not many people want to go to work anymore. But, uh, <laughs> we all have business we know about. Yeah, yeah we, uh, you know, we're doing the best that we can. And, uh, and a lot of people don't know how to work, uh, but our training is pretty in-depth. Uh, we do two weeks of training, so it's difficult to get people to go through the process of training so that they can be effective milk oil harvesters. Um, and, uh, and it, but we, we got a great team this season. We got six of 12. We uh, were six divers down and we've got, you know, quite a few accounts that we haven't been able to get to yet this season. Um, but uh, the good news is a lot of these lakes are in better conditions than they ever have been. Uh, so even with a year where we're struggling with employment, we're still able to uh, to keep it together. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a quick question that uh, if you if we have volunteers in town that would help. Yes. How does that work with you? 
Uh, we were working on uh, programs to support volunteer organizations, uh, you know, uh, uh, tank filling uh, incentives where we can fill people's tanks and uh, work with them, make sure that they have the proper equipment to harvest invasive plants. Uh, if, if they would reach out to me, then I would be able to further discuss uh, that, that with them. But if we were to develop a coalition of harvesters, I would definitely be interested in training them how to use the suction harvesting boat and get them out there uh, and harvest as many days as possible. I know that there was a few people from the Lake Lutheran Association very interested in it. Yeah. And I know there's a few guys in the fire department that are, that are divers. Yeah. And that would... Well, I, I, would, uh, I would require for them to take a paddy weed control course. It is a specialty course that only I can teach in the state of New York. Yeah. Um, and it is through uh, the PADI, which is the largest diving organization in the world. Um, it is specific to milfoil harvesting. It, it focuses on quality uh, in terms of how to properly remove the root system, how to prevent fragmentation and things like that. Uh, but I, I wouldn't recommend just throwing any diver in the water. I, it's a one day course. It's very simple. Just goes over the basics of milfoil removal. It's not like weeding a garden. There's a lot more to it. Um, and that takes a little bit of extra training, a little bit of extra time. Yeah, I, I just wanted to know that the basics, if that, that, that could be done, yeah. you know, first of all. I, I would full heartedly support that. And uh, we're right now, uh, we're actually uh, hosting a, uh, on the July 31st on our property, a, diver awareness uh, party uh, where we're going to have people come together. We're going to educate them. And in the future, we're going to work on fundraising efforts to raise money to support volunteer organizations in lakes like Lake Luzerne. I think in the future to save the people of Lake Luzerne money, uh, which was the whole goal of our boat bill program to begin with, I think a volunteer uh, group would be the best uh, possible solution because volunteers, they live around the lake. They want to clean the lake more than anybody. Um, and uh, and it would be more reliable than depending on a contractor to hire people and, and try to uh, work in that element. It's a seasonal business. It can be very difficult. Um, but I think for consistency in the future, I think putting merging both together would be a great option and keeping that cost down. The, the, the biggest goal of the boat bill, uh, which we, uh, you know, when we started in 2018 uh, with Gene Merlino, uh, was to continue to keep the cost of harvesting under that threshold that it wouldn't impact the taxpayers of Lake Luzerne. Uh, so many people here might not know, but the taxes, uh, nobody in Lake Luzerne, you know, when it comes to milfoil removal, that's been paid for through a grant. Uh, and we have uh, kept that harvesting cost low in order to continue that so that the taxpayers don't feel the brunt. So any sort of negativity that has developed in the community here in Lake Luzerne is uncalled for, in my opinion, but, you know, it happens. Yeah, yeah, we've worked very hard and $600 a day to have uh, the dive team out is a very fair rate. We, we yeah. totally agree. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have any enemies with that. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, we work very hard. It's the lowest, you, you pay uh, over $1,000 less than what Big George pays for harvesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are aware of that. Yeah. We appreciate what you do. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, we're not going to look at the uh, River Miria. We're, we're yeah. going to look forward, all right? Yes, yeah. So yes. Let's, uh, let's keep it going. I heard I might have gotten a few boos of the last painting. That's why uh, I. I, heard, I know yeah. we here. Okay, but good. Everybody's good. very good. appreciative of what you've done. Okay. Um, uh, and, and again, thank you for bringing the board over tonight. Yeah, hopefully uh, everyone can take a look at it. We have a nice dive flag on the side. It's actually the first right. suction harvesting unit with a, a self priming pump, uh, which my, my father and I designed a couple of years ago. Uh, no, most uh, pumps, every time the engine shuts off, you have to reprime it. Uh, this boat, once you prime the pump once, it has a flap in it. Uh, it's a pacer pump, uh, which many people probably have uh, used in the in the past. It primes itself, so it's very efficient. It just you fire it right up after you prime it the first time, and it will be primed for the entire season. Yes. I have a couple questions, then, yes. if you don't mind. Yes. I don't know first thing about milfoil, right? Yes. So that's why I'm asking you. We're, normally, would you be harvesting milfoil right now? Now I can. I, I would, if it. Yes. And say I don't know. What to, say it's 55 days of contractual obligation you have us. Is there a, a, a window of effectiveness that we're missing by you not going out there? Is it better to harvest it when it's young, when it's mature, when it's going the other way at the end of the year? Yes. How's that going to happen? How's that going to affect what you're Yeah, the, the most optimal time to harvest milfoil is in May and June uh, when the plants are small. However, harvesting in the later part of the season isn't ineffective. It's, it's just uh, attacking the, the battle a little bit late. So uh, it, it would be optimal to have a team harvesting early in the season. Uh, for the uh, organization element of it, uh, the water is very cold in May. So it's a little bit more difficult to get divers to harvest then. Uh, we, we have an in-house dive shop. Uh, we work with a company Excel for uh, the proper neoprene to keep people warm. Um, but that, that's a big difficulty when it comes to early season harvesting. 
The issue with uh, uh, waiting till later in the season is the plants are much more, uh, much taller. You might get more tonnage and it might look better, uh, but in terms of effectiveness, it is better to come in earlier in the season. Yep. Yeah, so we, I didn't know the answer. I wasn't setting yeah. up for anything. Right. Right. I just, no. just no, so I'll, natural. I'll, I'll be completely it. honest, you know, and it is more effective to get it early in the season. Uh, however, uh, some water bodies, uh, some lake associations do prefer us to come in later in the season for visibility purposes. Um, also, uh, they, you know, some people keep us working all the way to October and November. Uh, we, we've harvested, we harvest every year until November. So we do late season harvesting. We have the equipment for it, mm -hmm. um, but it would have been more optimal for us to come in earlier in the season. However, I, I, it couldn't happen uh, this year, but we're working very hard. Uh, our internship program in Chestertown, uh, we've developed a food program. We feed our divers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have buses that take our divers to the locations where they're harvesting. We have an in-house dive shop with an air compressor where we fill our own tanks. We provide, provide our own gear. And so we're providing all the incentives to get divers to come here. We just need more positivity regarding our program and we need some more outreach when it comes to colleges, which is something that we're working towards. Uh, with the pandemic, we weren't able to go to local universities and colleges and fundraise, you know, in person, uh, uh, try to uh, attract these young students. Uh, we had to do so virtually. So we were left uh, empty handed at, at, at the early part of the season. Uh, we did anticipate having the number of divers necessary, but there were a few people that didn't show up. My, my next question, I looked at the book when you had it down at the old highway garage. And yeah. On the front of it said USS Gene Merlino on it. Yes. Is that something you guys did? Or no. What? That's uh, uh, the town. Uh, the town did that. Our town? Yes. Okay. I didn't put that on the book. Okay. I didn't know if it was done out of disrespect or respect for it. So no. that's why I've asked. No, but, but yeah, but if, if it was, if we did do it, it would be out of respect. I, I truly admire Gene Merlino and what he's done for the town. I didn't uh, put that on the boat, the, the town of Garage did, um, but this boat is in memory of Gene Merlino and the hard work that he's done. It, it saved uh, close to $70,000 so far yes. for the town of Lake Luzerne, uh, and that's because of Gene Merlino. Can you, um, can you give us a little state of uh, the milfoil in the lake right now? Uh, the milfoil densities uh, uh, compared to previous seasons, I, I don't know the milfoil as a stance right now in Lake Luzerne. I can't comment on that because I haven't been on Lake Luzerne. Um, but from the last time that I was on Lake Luzerne, the densities were getting lower. Uh, there is milfoil throughout the lake. The, the best option for the town of Lake Luzerne, uh, if you were looking at it for a realistic perspective, would to do a full lake chemical application and follow it up with hand harvesting. Uh, there's too much milfoil throughout the lake embedded in the native plants, especially around the bend uh, when you get over to where all those homes are uh, next to the other public beach. Uh, and what we're doing is spinning our wheels. Uh, and that, that's an honest assessment. Uh, we do keep the milfoil down the best we can. We've knocked out the larger beds, uh, but keeping diver morale up when there's so much milfoil in the lake is, is very difficult. You need to have four teams out on Lake Luzerne uh, to, uh, to be effective. However, I still don't think that would be the best option. I'm never an advocate for chemicals. Uh, chemicals, uh, they, you know, they, they might have long-term effects on water bodies um, you know, in the future. Uh, it's one of those things that we do, and then we, uh, we look back in, in the you know, 100 years and realize what, what it's done. Uh, however, uh, with the amount of milfoil in Lake Luzerne uh, that is spread out and the amount of shoreline that it covers, we haven't been able to cover enough ground in Lake Luzerne for me to uh, feel as though we were, you know, covering, you know, uh, we were making a difference. Uh, we continue to work on the same shorelines on an annual basis. Our harvesters are high quality. I train them uh, myself. Uh, they do a very good job. It's just uh, a very difficult battle that we have ahead of us. Uh, but what, compared to when we first showed up to Lake Luzerne, many of those areas are looking much better. But in terms of the lake as a whole, uh, it's, it's a very challenging uh, thing that we're dealing with. What type of chemicals can be used? Uh, so there's a chemical they just use up in Minerva. I don't know the, the name of it, um, but what, what they, they have talked about is they use, uh, it's a lot more potent, so they use a lot less of the chemical. Um, I think it's a diquat that they use. I think that might be the name of it. However, chemical companies change the chemicals every, uh, every couple of years because the milfoil learns to adapt to the milfoil. Uh, they offer warranties and they'll come and spray your lake. However, there will still need milfoil left. So a lot of local lakes and water bodies in the Adirondack Park are dealing with the, this issue of, do I drop chemicals to relieve milfoil right now when in five years the milfoil will be back as bad as it was? Uh, or do I continue attempting to attack it with hand harvesting? Um, which to the public might seem ineffective because we're out there for 55 days and there's still a lot of milfoil in the lake. Um, so it puts us in a position where we're consistently uh, 
getting beat up, you know, and it's a very difficult industry to be part of. And that's why over the course of the last decade that I've been part of this industry, I've watched over a dozen companies go out of business. Same approaches, the chemicals that are being used? Uh, they, they approved it in Minerva Lake. Uh, uh, we were uh, uh, in a way, a, uh, um, a way for uh, Minerva Lake to be able to use chemicals. Uh, basically, the APA makes it very difficult to do chemical applications. Uh, but once you prove that you've uh, exhausted all other options, they will allow for an application. Uh, Lake Luzerne, I believe, had a chemical application maybe a decade ago. Um, oh, what was the name of that we put in there? That when we put that in the, in the under Pierpont Beach? Renovate. Renovate? Yeah. Renovate, yeah. 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 But they say it's, it's just as bad right now. I talked yeah. to somebody about it. But you're seeing most of the uh, devastation over by Pierpont Beach and that Cove area. Uh, there's a big infestation in that area, but the, it, the whole lake is infested. Yeah, that's, the, yes. that's the strongest point, right? That, that's, the mo that's the most difficult to harvest because of the native plants. The harvesting uh, with the native vegetation as uh, thick as it is, uh, removing the root system is nearly impossible because you, you're working around native plants. They're all intertwined. Yeah, they're all intertwined. And so uh, you, you, I'm at, if we're down there working with our hands. It's very difficult. Uh, and so suction harvesting, when we have the four inch uh, suction, a lot of people just wants to suck up everything. And not only is that illegal, uh, sucking up native vegetation, um, but it, it, uh, it's poor quality harvesting and the plants still come back. Um, one of the options that we considered was mechanical harvesting in that area, just to get the plants down uh, so that the people would be uh, alleviated uh, of the issues of uh, recreation. Um, but uh, you know, uh, that, that would also have its own out, uh, you know, issues when it comes to fragmentation. Uh, I just, I, you know, it's, it's a challenging uh, issue, but there is no foil throughout the lake. That is a big area of concern. Uh, the biggest uh, issue that we've dealt with is the people that live in that uh, bay over there. They, uh, they see us out every year, and yet we can only spend a week or two there just to appease their concerns, and yet we're not able to make much of a difference. And for, for diver morale, it's very, very challenging uh, keeping our divers coming to Lake Lazarne. Does that uh, yeah. cause, Dominic, um, due to the fact that the flow of water in that dead area? Yeah. Or is it also caused possibly by other? A, a little bit of everything, I, I'd imagine. The milfoil was able to take hold in there and you do have boaters, paddlers that come through causing fragmentation. Milfoil is a very aggressive plant. Um, so it spreads in three different ways. It spreads when it seeds, uh, when it fragments, and then when it folds over and creates its own root system. Uh, and so uh, when a milfoil plant uh, seeds, the seeds can lay dormant for Four to five years. Uh, if a you know wind, a strong wind comes, someone paddles and knocks the seeds loose. Um, when we first showed up to Lake Luzerne, we were filling our boat with so much milfoil we were sinking the boat on the way back. Uh, last year we were pulling a, a decent amount of milfoil, but nothing compared to that because the densities were lower. Um, but we were also harvesting uh, earlier in the season, and so that also deals with quantity as well. The biggest issue with the original contract we worked out with the town was this anticipation of sixty tons. Sixty tons is an impossible goal. Uh, tonnage, uh, the, the uh, biggest uh, disappointment uh, that I have in the Adirondack Park is the, uh, the way that uh, the park has talked about milfoil removal. Uh, Lake George is consistently in the paper and all they talk about is how they spend half a million dollars on milfoil removal and how they pull 90 tons of milfoil. So every other lake in the Adirondack Park wants to do that, but nobody knows that Lake George spent $100,000 on one patch of milfoil off of the million dollar beach. They will, and, and, and you know, they, they will pay an enormous amount of money and the milfoil still comes back. And that's what doesn't get talked about. People only talk about how much money be, is being spent and how much milfoil is being pulled. My biggest frustration with that is that is, is difficult to manage the quality of harvesting uh, when those are the expectations from the customers because uh, quality uh, is the most important thing when it comes to milfoil harvesting. And, uh, and we're gonna stick to that 100%. Um, and, uh, and that's what's going to continue to uh, keep the regrowth down, to keep the uh, areas we're working getting better. It's not about how much you spend and how much you pull. Um, 60 tons was a, a goal that we were never able to reach, and we could never reach because, you know, we'd have to suck up every plant in the lake to, to pull that. Um, and uh, so that, that was a difficult challenge. But uh, with, you know, with Lake George continuing to talk about how much money they spend and how much uh, tons they pull, about spending half a million dollars on milfoil removal, it makes it difficult for towns like Lake Luzerne to have a positive outlook on their milfoil battle. Um, and many of our clients in the Adirondack Park, because no one, no, none of these lakes would ever have the money to do that. 
And even if you did, I wouldn't suggest spending it. I, I think that volunteer organizations are the most genuine uh, and the most uh, uh, optimistic uh, avenue for attacking milfoil removal. I think education is extremely important and that's why Aqualogic has taken a turn for education. I became a PADI instructor and, and took on the PADI Week Control course from an instructor who retired in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, he developed the course in the 90s and he's in his 80s now. Uh, so he, uh, he's, he's done with milfoil removal. Uh, but our focus on in the future is going to be training and working with lakes to have volunteer organizations to pull invasive aquatic plant removal, supporting volunteers but by filling tanks, by providing scuba gear, by uh, providing proper technique for uh, harvesting, but also providing a community uh, for those divers so that divers feel comfortable. They have a place to, uh, to, to you know, have a good time. I have a few parties over the season, create a little bit of positive energy. Um, for, you know, just like the, the gathering we'll have on the 31st with a little bit of live music and a, and a good time. And we'll be offering rides home for anybody um, <laughs> who drinks a little bit too much. Yeah. And, uh, but our goals are to continue to keep the cost down and make a difference. Uh, the, there's been a lot of money spent in the Adirondack Park, and it is an embarrassment uh, when it comes to the amount of money that's spent on milfoil removal and having milfoil still exist in these water bodies. The one town uh, that has beaten that embarrassment is Lake Luzerne because Lake Luzerne has uh, not put the burden on the people of the town. Lake Luzerne has uh, uh, worked on a unique uh, situation where they've been able to keep the cost down, continue to, to have milfoil removal and milfoil education, uh, where people are able to see a boat out on the water, ask questions, learn about milfoil, uh, become more educated, uh, reduce the, it reduces the likelihood that they're gonna introduce new invasive aquatic plants to the water body, because they see people working so hard out on the water uh, to remove them. Uh, so I, I think that it's been very uh, positive uh, what, what you've been doing, but I also think that you've uh, been able to, to think outside the box. And uh, I think it's very impressive in my opinion, compared to some of the lakes that are spending five, six million dollars over a decade and still having milfoil and fragments throughout the lake. Uh, we go to Rogers Rock on Lake George to go diving all the time and there's milfoil there, fragments everywhere. Um, just like on every, uh, most other lakes with milfoil, uh, the difference is the amount of money that's being spent and the amount of money that's being wasted. Um, the internship program that we have, uh, we just provided a $15,000 grant to the Paradox Lake Association. Uh, that grant was provided for through the uh, money that we, we charge people to participate in our internship program. We provide food for them. We provide uh, a gear. Uh, they come to our dive shop. They buy gear. We provide training. And then we, uh, we have fun. Uh, we went to Nubble Lighthouse uh, for a dive, saw some jellyfish. Uh, we, we keep the diving interesting and we have uh, environmental students from all around the United States that participate in this program. Uh, we have somebody from Texas who's diving in upstate New York water, which I'm very uh, you know proud of, of him and his hard work. Um, but one thing that stands out the most is the quality of the harvesting of these divers and the ability for us to, to create funding for water bodies that struggle with invasive aquatic plant uh, harvesting. Thank you, Tom. Yes. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming. We've got a dissipated area now. Perfect. To keep the uh, trailer and your bus. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much. So when you pull out, or we'll, pull in, you we'll, can remove it and park your vehicle there. We're, we're going to do everything in our power to get on Lake Lizard in this season and harvest milk right. flow and, and make this happen. And I can guarantee you that. We are doing uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, we, this has been a very stressful week for Aqualogic. Uh, you know, it's not. Yeah. But it's okay. Uh, we are uh, we're figuring it out. <laughs> it's, uh, people, uh, you know, it's just tough because uh, for me, I'll always be here fighting milfoil. But sometimes people are find it easy to walk away, uh, and those are the challenges that I have. I, I can't dive on every water body all the time, uh, and so it will, when it comes to employment in today's world, uh, it it is a little bit challenging um, because they, it's almost as if the employee is the boss. They, uh, they, they you know, uh, but we we work hard, hard and. We do whatever we can to, uh, to, to keep these divers happy uh, and healthy. Uh, our food plan this season is, uh, I, have, I cook vegan meals at, at night too. I, I plan a lot of other stuff well, after a dive day. So I, I, I dive, I cook, and I do everything I can to, and, and build boats. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, we have a boat that's on water. So yeah. Oh yeah, so uh, yes, we're going to launch a boat uh, and we will have a boat parked at a dock. I uh, look for the dive flag out on the water because Aqualogic is here. Aqualogic is back in Lake Luzerne. And Aqualogic is going to be this milfoil battle for Lake Luzerne you. with your help. Thanks, yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, thank you so much.
think that's it. We need a motion to adjourn. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I received word this week that I have a, a member of my planning board that is going to resign. I instructed him to provide a letter to the town clerk with his resignation. And so I just want to get the word out there that we're going to need um, another alternate for the planning board at some point. And as soon as we receive that letter of resignation, we will be able to move our alternate up to a permanent position on the board, but we, we will need another alternate for the planning board. Can you, can you post that? Effect? Pardon? When's the effective date on that? I don't have an effective date. He stopped into my office and told me he was going to have to resign. I instructed him to provide Cindy with a um, letter of resignation so that it could come to the board because you got you are the ones. So we did. Yeah. You might want to help him do a letter. Yeah, no, I will. I told him, but no, yeah. he's got another one to write to. Okay. And the other thing is, um, actually, I wanted to talk to Dave to the attorney about. Um, I think he's coming back. In. He's coming back in. The other item that I had, uh, Attorney Mitchell, is you and I had spoken, and you indicated to me that you were going to do some kind of a resolution um, regarding referring all of my um, zoning and planning board actions to the Adelaide Park Agency. I didn't know if that was coming up for this meeting or we would do it as we revise the zoning ordinance. We can do both. I can do the resolution. The, re the revision of the zoning ordinance would be a local law. That would be in the <coughs> right, yeah, I understand so. that. But Did you can... explain the need for the- No, I have found in my zoning ordinance, um, it refers, it states that actions that are done by the zoning board and the planning board variances and site plans need to be referred to the Adirondack Park Agency. My policy has been, since I have been here, is that when someone talks to me about an application, I make that part of their responsibility to do a letter, to do an inquiry with the Adirondack Park Agency to see if they have jurisdiction over whatever project is taking place. I do that with building permits. I advise them my, that my job as the zoning officer is to tell them that they're in the Adirondack Park Agency. The Adirondack Park Agency may have jurisdiction over whatever they're doing. It is their responsibility to check with the Adirondack Park Agency. I have seen in files where people have not check with the Adirondack Park Agency and Adirondack Park Agency supersedes the zoning, town with concern zoning. They're a higher level of government than, than zoning offices. And I have seen in files where people have not checked, they do um, enforcements, they do penalties, they do all kinds of things. So what I have been doing is telling, as I just stated, telling people it's their responsibility to check and on matters that for variances and site plans and special use permits, we make it part of their project to um, check with the Adirondack Park Agency, have a letter in the file that yes, they either need a permit with them or no, it's not jurisdictional. What I have found is in, this, in the subdivision book, which is not part of, zoning ordinance, it does not refer to the Adirondack Park Agency in any way. I have asked them to do that up to this point, but it came to a head recently over a situation, and I found that, that it's not mentioned in the subdivision book. I feel it should be, and I spoke to the attorney about it, and the reasons being, I have, again, found in the files where people where they have gone back and penalized people for not having checked with them. So I talked to um, attorney Mitchell and um, we decided, decided, we decided that it would be best if we make some kind of a um, resolution that makes it part of my process to make people check with the Adirondack Park Agency in subdivisions as well. Um, to see if they have jurisdiction or not. The reason is, is in the subdivision part of it, the way the ordinance is written right now, 
our ordinance does not match the Adirondack Park Agency rules, where we may call for one acre for a house. The Adirondack Park Agency may be one and a half acres for a house. And so if we allow it to be one acre lots, the Adirondack Park Agency may not allow it to be one acre lots. It should have been one and a half acre lots. That's just an example. So that's why it should be referred to them because somewhere down the line that's going to catch up to the owners and it's going to cause them a problem. <clears throat> and by doing this, it would alleviate that. And in the short term, it'll allow uh, the parent to provide the applicant with a copy of the resolution so they don't give her a lot of pushback if she says, hey, listen, you got to right. send us the. Ultimately, yeah. it is yeah. their responsibility. It is. And, and most, I would say, the line share people that you communicate with are happy to do it without any objection, but you might get one or two of them. So I think we're going to look at the And that can be taken care of once we, we do the, the comprehensive plan, anyways, right? It'll be it'll be in a local law for the new zoning. Yeah, we do a comprehensive for the new zoning right. next year. Uh, but in the short term, that'll be a local law, though, which will be in the zoning, which will be some enforcement provisions to the zoning enforcement officer. A resolution would not do that, but it would give her, her and Karen, Opportunity to present that to the applicant and say, hey, the town board requires this approach for the APA. So we can we just give her a little bit of peace. Okay. Yeah. 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 It'll be on the agenda. Yes. But again, because this resolution will be no enforcement. But their application won't move forward if they don't have it, right? Uh, they, they won't. No. But you so can't have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just want to touch base that next week is the second spring cleanup and the 14th we're paving the uh, Schofield Road. We just got a little bit more brush to do on that. That'll be right. I did reach out to that lady on a off circular street that goes up that I told you to take a pothole off in front of the place. On Hill Street? No, on Circular Street when you when you repave Circular Street. Oh, okay. And are you going to top it? Yeah. That you'd go up and take care of Pine yeah. Street and uh, uh Billsville. Yes, Billsville. Yes, yes. Yeah. So. I did talk to her. So. Okay, is it? Make a motion to reserve. All in favor? I guess that. Oh, we're going to go into an executive session. We can do it this time. Imminent. We can do it next week. When Okay, perfect. Council yeah. members, sir. Okay, right. Aye. 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 Aye.